So did you know there's actually a formula to determine how good the sunset is gonna be? I did not know that. You didn't know that. It's actually based on humidity and I think the percentage of chance of rain. So if it's either just rained or just about to rain and the humidity is between like 50 and 60%, there's a good chance you'll get a nice colorful sunset. I had no clue. I suck at sunset photos. Well, we're about to get better. So stay tuned because we're gonna take some photos and then we're gonna jump into Lightroom and edit them afterwards. This is an Alex Hartley view. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of a problem. I think the humidity rule didn't turn out quite the way we were expecting. There's a few too many clouds. Blue hour? Can make blue hour work. I think blue hour is gonna work. Check back in a minute. We're gonna take some photos and then we'll edit these blue hour photos in Lightroom. I'm super bummed that we didn't get a full sunset, but nonetheless, we still got some cool photos and I wanna walk you through everything that I shot, including the gear and the settings that I used to shoot them. First off, I was using two lenses. The first was this 85 millimeter Viltrox 1.8 RF lens. It's a nice lens, but it doesn't have image stabilization. So I'm gonna show you what settings I used to fix that. I'm gonna skip these first couple of photos and just go straight to this one where I was shooting with that lens. You can see it's a very zoomed in compressed photo. That's because I was trying to shoot this building and put some foreground elements in this photo. But the problem with this photo is that it's, it's a little bit too flat. Same thing with these next couple of photos. This one wasn't too bad on the 85, but again, the the foreground is just so blurry. It just looks like a solid blob of color and it kind of looks like a mistake. So I actually went to the next lens that I was I brought with me, which was the 24 to 70. Now this is a super versatile lens. I've been shooting with it for the last couple of months, but it's an expensive lens. What I like to use it for is the ability to shoot both a wide angle and a really tight angle, which you can see in this first photo here, I'm shooting it at 24 millimeters, which is all the way zoomed out. And I'm getting all this nice foreground. I'm getting a reflection off of the boat. I took a couple photos like this, and you'll notice that my settings are pretty consistent here. ISO 640, and shutter speed one over 200. You can see it was set to one over 200 because I'm taking my focal length of 85, doubling it to get 170, and then rounding up to about one over 200. If I was shooting at a slower shutter speed, like one over 20, what would happen is that the water and anything passing by would end up looking blurry because you may not be moving, but the boat is moving. And then if you combine that with the fact that sometimes you're shaky, then you can get this motion blur. Now, these weren't the only two lenses I had with me, but if you wanna see the other lenses that I frequently use, including my vlogging lens, my wide angle lens, my telephoto lens, which you can probably see in the background there, all of that is linked in the description below, along with the gear that I use on an everyday basis. So going back, I was shooting photos on the 24 to 70, and then I zoomed in and did some at 70, but again, we're having the same problem where everything looks very flat. The sky maybe looked good, the CN Tower looked good, but these photos are kind of just average. There's nothing really special about them. With this photo, I've also lowered my shutter speed, which can be a little bit problematic with the moving boat. And I think if you zoom in, you'll kind of notice that there's a little bit of streaking in the water, not too much. So one over a hundred, you can kind of get away with it. But I've also boosted my ISO because as blue hour changes, you'll notice that your lighting ratios change where in the first couple of images, you know, you could see the buildings. They're pretty well lit. The lights are just starting to come on. The sky is still very bright. But as you progress, the sky gets darker, the buildings get darker, and then all of a sudden the artificial lights inside the building start to take over. Again, I've boosted my ISO, ISO 1600. Maybe if I had shot this 20, 30 minutes earlier, it'd be a little bit better. But I'm not crazy about the fact that the CN Tower kind of looks like it's blending in with this other building. So those are little things that you always need to be mindful. When you're shooting, you're looking at both your settings 
and your composition. This is one of the ones that I starred as one of my favorites, but I think the one I really like is this one because what I was doing is I moved forward in the boat so that I was getting the sail and then the hull of the boat framing downtown Toronto. And then if I go forward to this one, which is shot at 36 millimeters, I really like it, but I do want to crop it in. So I'm going to jump to my crop tool and I'm going to try and center the CN Tower. And that's the photo that I'm going to be happy with. Editing this, every photo is gonna be different. Your photo may be brighter, maybe darker. Mine's a little bit dark, so I'm gonna bump up the exposure so that we can get more detail out of it. And if you're ever unsure about how much you should bump your exposure, if you hold the Alt button while dragging, you can see where the blacks and the whites start to clip. You don't want too much, of, like if you have it looking like this where the whole image is showing up, you've dragged the blacks too far. You want it where just a little bit starts to show up. Same thing with the whites. Now, if you want to expand the dynamic range of your photo, this is where you'll want to increase the shadows and lower the highlights. As I mentioned before, we have these lighting ratios where maybe now the building is a little bit too dark. So I'm actually gonna raise that. But what you'll start to notice now is that there's a little bit of noise coming through. And to fix that, there's two things you can do. You can drop the texture just a little bit, or another way is to go down to the noise reduction and actually increase the luminance. Now you have to be very careful with this feature because it can start to make certain subjects look really weird. And if for any reason you ever lose detail, you can just drag a little bit of it back in by dragging the detail slider. Depending on how much detail you have in your image, you may also want to drag the clarity slider. If you drag it too far, everything kind of looks like fake HDR. And that's not what we want, but I do want just a little bit. So I'm gonna keep it maybe at around 10. Now the one setting that you really wanna nail is white balance. If you're doing a blue edit, it can be really tempting to just drag this all the way left. But now the problem is you've obliterated all your other colors and everything just looks blue. You could do the opposite and drag that to look really warm, but now it looks like everything's on fire. So you kind of need to find that happy medium and in my case, I'd say between six and 7,000 is probably where I wanna live. I'm gonna do some really quick curves adjustment. I'm not gonna go through it in detail, but if you wanna know more about curves, check out this tutorial here. For this photo, I wanna do the majority of my coloring under color grading. Now, if you wanna understand the technicalities of how color grading works, check out this tutorial here. But for the most part, I'm gonna make my shadows blue. I'm gonna make my midtones and my highlights more into the warm color wheel section. But then I also wanna drag down the brightness of my shadows to make them darker so that I'm getting more contrast out of this photo. And you might look at this and go, well, that's not a very blue hour photo. It's, it's too warm. And you're right. And the easiest way to fix this is because we've already allocated blues to the shadows is actually go down to the balance tool. And if I drag the balance tool to the left, you'll notice that it adds more of the shadow color. If I drag it to the right, it adds more of the midtones and the highlight colors. In this case, it makes it look very red. So I'm just gonna drag that to the left. Now you might look at this still and go, well, it looks a little bit purpley. Like I don't, I don't want purple in there. And that's where I would go back up to the HSL tab to make my final tweaks. In this case, I'm actually gonna drag down the saturation of those purpley tones. And another way to fix this is you could go and hue shift them. So you can make purple look more blue and you can make magenta look more red and more warm. I think I'm also gonna take the greens, which I don't have too many of, and I'm gonna shift them towards yellow and my aquas and shift them towards blue. So I get that really intense blue. Take my yellows, shift them towards orange and my reds and shift them also towards orange. Now, if I zoom in, you can really notice the effects of this when I turn it on and off. There's before where the CN Tower was kind of purpley. The sky kind of had fringes of purple and then I put it on and all those extra colors are gone. One more thing I'm gonna do because I want the sky at the top to appear a little bit more warm is I'm gonna grab a linear gradient and just drag drag it down from the sky and then white balance shift this to be a little bit warmer. My strategy whenever I'm doing masking or brushing is really just to get rid of distractions that are in the photo. Brighten up things that you want to see and darken other things that you're maybe not so interested in seeing. 
One more thing you can do that's super fun is that if you've already made all your edits and everything looks blue and orange, you can go one step further and get those desaturated orange edits that you've probably seen everywhere. All you have to do is come into your HSLs, drag the blues and the aquas all the way down, and then go back to your color grading. Instead of having it set to blue, you just go to zero, and now you've got this really cool, moody, sunset, gray, and orange look. If you like this style of video where I go out, shoot photos, and show you everything I captured and the gear I used to capture it, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already, consider hitting the subscribe button so that you get more videos just like this. Thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you in the next one.